Today we're gonna to make one of my favorite dishes, meatloaf. We're gonna do it with a brown mushroom gravy. Here's all the ingredients. Let's get into it right now. As I always like to go over the ingredients, I think it makes it easier for you. It makes it easier for me as well. Right here on this cutting board is the meatloaf ingredients and here are the gravy ingredients. For the meatloaf, we have two and a half pounds of ground chuck. You could use really any type of meat you want. You could even use turkey. It'll just be a little drier. I have one cup of breadcrumbs, couple day old bread. You can run it through a food processor or you can just buy coarse breadcrumbs from the supermarket. Just use plain breadcrumbs since we're gonna season this thing up ourselves anyway. I have a half a cup of milk. That's gonna make it moister. Now, this is 80-20 chuck, so it's already fairly moist, but why not make it moister? The onion is gonna give it a lot of flavor, but that's also gonna add moisture to your meatloaf mix. And it's a medium onion that I did a pretty fine dice with. You guys might remember growing up, your mom, maybe she made the Lipton soup meatloaf. That's very, very popular here in the Northeast, especially. You know, this is kind of like that, but I guess maybe making it your own from scratch. We have uh, three cloves of garlic. I grated two or three, whatever you want. I have one tablespoon of Worcestershire sauce, two eggs. Eggs are just a binder. They're not going to add flavor to it. Quarter cup of minced parsley, and then about two teaspoons to three teaspoons of fresh thyme. This thyme is very hard to pull off the leaves. I feel like these stems are almost edible, and we're going to make the gravy with the drippings from this meatloaf. So it's going to be an easy gravy to make. It's going to be delicious. It has mushrooms. I have a pound of cremini mushrooms right here. This is six tablespoons of flour. We're going to use six tablespoons of the drippings. I have a half a cup of dry white wine. If you don't want to use the white wine, you don't have to. I have three cups of low sodium beef stock. More time instead of taking too much time to pull off all the leaves. I'm just gonna put this straight in the gravy and then we could just fish it out and a little salt and pepper in the gravy and all that. Right now you can set your oven to 400 degrees Fahrenheit and set the rack to the middle level. Meatloaf is awesome and you know, if you don't think it is, you're wrong. <laughs> it's that simple, it's great. We're just gonna combine all these ingredients. Now, if you were using fresh bread, you can hydrate your breadcrumbs again. You could even hydrate even these breadcrumbs from the store. You could just put them in your bowl, and you can just add your milk in first, just kind of to make a little bit of a paste. I'm just gonna mix that together like that. You can put your ingredients in any order you want. I'm just gonna put my meat in, and one thing I'm going to do here is spread it around and then put our seasoning down on it. Normally about one teaspoon of salt per pound of meat would be a good amount here. I have two and a half pounds of chuck, so we're gonna use two teaspoons of kosher salt. So that's one. And well, let's save off on the second one for a bit. We'll just mix this around, like turn it upside down and then put the remaining bit of salt on there. Just so like we're not putting all the salt on in just one area. I have two eggs. We have all that onion. So this is a lot of onion. Like I said, it's gonna add great flavor, but it's gonna add a lot of uh, moisture to it. I have the one tablespoon of Worcestershire sauce, the parsley, that was a quarter cup, the garlic, Hopefully we can mix that around good enough. You know, you could also use garlic powder here. And then the two teaspoons of fresh thyme, and you could easily use dry thyme. The one thing I forgot was pepper, and I'm gonna put in about a half to one teaspoon of black pepper. It's the only thing that's, that's a little difficult when you're making a meatloaf recipe, is once you do it, you can't taste it. So if you're really worried and like, say like you don't trust my recipe or you don't trust yourself, take a little bit of it, Roll it up, stick it in the microwave. Now you're not gonna have the best consistency or texture, but you'll cook it till it's done. And then you can taste it. And then you'll know if you don't have enough salt, pepper, whatever, you go back to your mix and then you add it. Now we gotta get our hands in there. Now I wish I had an even bigger bowl than this, but I don't. So we're gonna try our best. We're gonna get all the way at the bottom, all those breadcrumbs. We already made meatloaf in the past on this channel. We made an Italian style one that had red wine, mushrooms, a lot of uh, Parmesan cheese in it. And that one was really good. This one that we're making today is really different. I really wanna get all this pretty incorporated and I have a lot of breadcrumbs stuck to the bottom there. So I gotta mix them all up. You do want to not over mix too much. So guys, we just mixed up all the ingredients. Before we put it in the oven, I ran into the office and I wanna tell you about today's sponsor, Surfshark VPN. They have all the ingredients you need for a secure, private, online experience. And now with an 85% discount and three free months. 
We first started looking into VPNs when we were planning a family trip and realized that a VPN can keep our browsing private. This stops travel sites from tracking data and raising prices based on our browsing history. Then there are times that I want to search for something online that's no one's business. So what does Surfshark VPN actually do? When you access the internet, a VPN helps to mask the information you put out there, which is also known as encryption. Surfshark can help protect your privacy and block malicious websites and other threats. You can also change your location to unlock geo-restricted content. And Surfshark is great for travelers since you can access your online information securely from across the globe. So if you want to secure all your devices from almost anywhere in the world, Surfshark is offering my viewers 85% off for a 24-month plan, plus three free months when you use my code FEAST. Click the link in the description and use code FEAST to access these savings. And thanks to Surfshark for sponsoring today's video. Now let's get back to meatloaf. Any baking dish would be fine for this, guys. This, this is a perfect one for a meatloaf. So I'm just going to try to pull this out, and I'll make the loaf inside the pan. You can shape it a little bit. It tends to just fit its shape fairly well when you just get it out of the bowl like that. The more you can smooth this out here and push it together, the less chance your meatloaf is gonna crack. Now you're not making a cheesecake here. If it cracks, nobody's gonna care. And we made a bunch of cheesecakes the other day and oh boy. All right, that is a perfect looking meatloaf. I'm just like making sure that it's like relatively the same size all around so so it'll bake bake evenly. It's gonna take about 50 to 60 or 70 minutes. You wanna cook this till it gets to 160 degrees Fahrenheit in the center of it. Let's get it in the oven right now. I took it out. It took an hour and 10 minutes. What I did was I checked it at the 50 minute mark. It was about 130 degrees. And I checked it at the 60 minute mark. It was like 140 and now that's my timer, and that's the perfect 159. But that's perfectly cooked. Well, there's a lot of fat inside of here, and I wanna get about six tablespoons of it out of here. If you use like a leaner meat and you don't have six tablespoons, you can just make up the difference with butter. One tablespoon of butter to equal one tablespoon of the fat and drippings here. With the help of my wife, we took it and I just put it in here. You can just stick it off to the side. You wanna let your meatloaf sit for 15, 20 minutes before you cut into it anyway, so it solidifies. We'll have enough time to make our gravy now. And I don't care, I'll take all that stuff, you know, the meat, all the drippings. I wanna get all this charred flavor. You know, if you do this in a roasting pan, you can just make your gravy straight in the roasting pan. We'll use all that too. So I'm gonna use this pan right here. I just want something that has a little bit of a lip on it, just because we're gonna be putting three cups in here for the gravy plus the mushrooms. I'm gonna turn my heat to medium. And remember, you have plenty of time here to do this because you want your meatloaf to sit. Let's get six here. I am gonna take this stuff. I don't mind, it's gonna be great. We'll do five instead of six. I hope I don't regret it. If you don't have enough fat, like I said before, just use butter to make up the difference. I'm not gonna sear mushrooms in multiple batches. We're just gonna do the best we can right here. So we're gonna spread them out and let them get a little bit of a sear. And if you think you need a little bit more heat, just crank it up a little bit. You can go maybe like a six out of 10. That's been about three minutes where I just kind of left them undisturbed. I did add that last tablespoon of grease in there. I'm just gonna move them around. You can see how a lot of water is releasing in the pan. Oh, those look so good. Look at how the color in them now from the fat tower. Look at these, these are, look, look at how delicious they Looks look. Looks good. I can smell them. Oh, right? Yeah. So you're getting your meat, well, gravy with your meat drippings. This is like a meatloaf that you'd get if you went to an Irish pub. Definitely. Sometimes they'll, they'll fancy it up. They'll do like a, a Jameson gravy, whiskey gravy. But for the most part, it's very basic and delicious. I'm actually gonna put in a half a cup of wine before I put the flour in. You can do this either way. You can put the flour in, then the wine. It doesn't make a difference. If you don't wanna use wine, just go straight for the flour right now. When you put the wine in, keep your head back. We're gonna turn the heat up to about an eight out of 10, and we're just gonna reduce most of this liquid. We're gonna get that wine flavor now with the, with the meat concentrating in the mushrooms. It's gonna be really good. The liquid's almost all done. I'll put a little bit of pepper on those mushrooms. Just a touch of salt. Doesn't really need it because we're gonna put in our stock. Mix that around and then we have six tablespoons of flour. So we're just using the same amount as what we um, used for the fat. Just mix this around until it just gets incorporated and just a little bit of color on this flour. 
You just don't want the raw white flour. It, it'll have a better taste the more you cook the flour out. At the same time, we're not cooking this flour for 10 minutes. We're not doing what you would do for gumbo or something like that. That color right now is great. That's what we're looking for. So I have three cups of low sodium beef stock. Same thing, just turn your heat up to about seven out of 10. We're just gonna bring this to a boil and then we will lower down for a simmer. This is gonna give you a little less than three cups of gravy. It's gonna be a thick gravy. We're gonna put the thyme in and we're gonna let this simmer for about five minutes. So it's only been a couple minutes of simmering. The gravy consistency is like this. So really nice and thick. If you like it even thicker than that, just turn your heat back up close to high and just reduce and it will thicken more. If you like it on the thinner side, just add a little bit of water, maybe a quarter cup at a time to get it exactly how you like it. I am gonna put just a little bit of pepper in here. And I'm just gonna put about a half teaspoon of salt in there because there's already salt in that beef stock. There's already salt in the drippings and um, we put a little salt on the mushrooms. So this is good to go. We're gonna serve this up and get the taste tester down here right now. Hey, hold on. Okay. This kid. Hi, James. Hi. We're not gonna judge the green beans though because I didn't make the green beans. Um, we're just gonna judge the meatloaf. That's what I made. Okay. All right. So, Tara and James. What about the mushrooms? Uh, yeah, I made the mushroom gravy. Uh, I put a lot of work into it. Oh my God. It's so good. Is it? Yeah. I love meatloaf. I haven't had it in so long. Somebody said the other day that you gave a fake a fake rating and that you, you hated my food. It really hurt my feelings because I was like, that's not true. I mean, I love doing this. I love when they try it. And this isn't like a dish that, I don't know when the last time I made it for them, like this type of meatloaf was a while ago. So mm. it's like, they're kind of like, like- two years ago. Yeah, they're kind of trying it for the first time. The gravy's so good. Okay. Can I eat all of it? You can, but why don't you do a, why don't you do a rating, you know? I'm that right there is saying a lot, but yeah, do a rating. I, I will not look. I'm pretty confident about this one. I am actually really confident about this one. I'm gonna get. I'm gonna guess this time, James. Yeah. I think you gave me a ten. You did. I you did. Yes. <laughs> Show the paper. Let's see it. Nice. Mama? What do you think I gave it? I think you gave it a nine. A nine? <laughs> I knew mama, I knew you gave it a nine because you're not as big a fan of like beef dishes. Do you want to know why yes. I gave it a nine? Yes. I think it's really good. I, like I was smelling as you were cooking it, I was smelling the thyme and the white wine and I'm not tasting it enough right okay. now. So and I don't know if it's thyme. like my taste is messed up, but I feel like thyme and maybe even like more of like a wine Flavor. Anything like that will be better the next day. You know, it's it's just how it is. Like mm -hmm. the flavors will meld more. I mean, this was like a very quick gravy. If you would have like infuse the time more, let it cook a little bit, simmer a little bit longer, you'd probably be good. But you know what? It gives you the right amount of time when it comes out of the oven to make a gravy quickly. When I eat the mushroom by itself, I'm tasting the time. I feel like the mushrooms kind of like soaked up yeah. That flavor. I, I just, I got lazy and I was like, I pulled off the time from the initially for the inside the meatloaf, but I like didn't want to do it for, for the gravy and I just tied it up, you know? Yeah, so. no, I mean, other than that, it's delicious. I love, I love the Italian meatloaf, yeah. but I like this better. Like, I don't know. I feel like this. Well, that means a lot because yeah. people loved, loved that. No, meatloaf. I mean, I feel like this is something like you said, like, yeah. You'd go into like an Irish bar and you would get this or like yeah. shepherd's pie or something like that. Shepherd's pie um, is definitely coming up on the channel at some point. And you make it, that's like my fa one of my favorite things that you make. to make that. Yeah. So James, uh, thank you. I think that says it all. <laughs> <laughs> I'm gonna finish mine too, yeah. but I'll wait till the camera's turned off so I can get into it. All right. <laughs> all right, I still gotta take pictures, so don't eat all the gravy. We'll see you next time.